somebody call 911. Shorty fire burning on the dance floor. I, I just did the finger guns. That, that, that's how you know an old man is dancing here. But uh, your Minnesota Fighting Vikings, we're starting to get to the fun part of the offseason where uh, the combine is afoot. Uh, free agency is also a- about to kick off in exactly two weeks from today. Uh, extensions, contracts, trades, the draft, all that stuff. Uh, and the Vikings are looking to get out of competitive rebuild to just competitive would be great, man. And uh, the Vikings, there's a lot of moves up in the air. Quace is going to have to pull his money ball uh, one more time, as well as the draft. It's going to be a good time. But hopefully, hopefully, uh, this will be one of the most prodigious off seasons uh, for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings. So here are five, five hot, caliente, hot fire predictions for the Vikings offseason. Numero uno, Kirk Cousins resigns for less than you think. Now, all of the reasons why. You know, Vikings fans are hesitant to pay Kirk Cousins. Like, oh, is he going to flip a switch and become a Super Bowl caliber quarterback, a, a, a guy that you can win a Super Bowl because of, not just a guy that you can win a Super Bowl with? Mm. Uh, but also going to be 36 in August, coming off that Achilles, and you don't want to give him multiple guaranteed years because you don't want to be holding the odious bag once his play falls off due to age. And uh, Father Time is undefeated. Tom Brady is an anomaly. And you, you don't have to look any further than the Broncos and Russell Wilson with that big-ass contract and just like, uh, n- not so much. So all the reasons why the, the Falcons, who could go in a different direction, maybe they'll trade for Fields. The Steelers could go in a different direction. Maybe they'll trade for Fields. Or, or the Raiders maybe could go in a different direction. Maybe they trade for Fields. You could see why, again, all it takes is one. But all those other teams would be certainly be hesitant about giving Kirk Cousins multiple guaranteed years, which is exactly what he's looking for. I, I don't think that the total number matters as much as the guarantee stretched out beyond 2024. Uh, so, Kirk, I, I do think he does get to the market uh, when it opens up on March 13th. Uh, but I think that the offers out there went, aren't going to blow him away. And he does decide to run it back with the Vikings on uh, a deal that's less than you think. Again, two years, eighty million bucks. Now you're saying, "Oh, we're giving, giving Kirk." Uh, but the market rate for a quarterback now, nowadays, is probably around fifty, fifty-five million. I mean, looking at the estimates for uh, extension estimates for Tua, fifty-five, Jordan Love, fifty, fifty-five million per year. I mean, that's the market rate for a above-average starting quarterback. And for Kirk. So the structure is important. So two years, $80 million, $50 million guaranteed. Now, most of that uh, is in a partial signing bonus, and uh, and the rest of it is in the 2024 base salary. So the Vikings give him two years, but only just a smidgen, partial guarantee uh, in 2025. So that way, uh, th- th- they have the flexibility going into the draft. They can make a move and get their quarterback of the future, sit him behind Kirk for a year, have the best of both worlds, shove all in, you know, with Kirk Cousins uh, this season, and if the kid is ready to go, uh, let Kirk Cousins walk, or they have they still have the possibility of trading him uh, since it is a two-year deal. I think that's what the compromise is going to be, where the Vikings maintain ultimate flexibility with Kirk. It's basically a team option for 2025. They could trade him as opposed to letting him walk away for nothing, uh, like, like in this offseason. And Kirk, you know, gets 50 million guaranteed, potentially uh, more if he's back for two years. So. We'll see. I feel like that is the compromise that's going to happen because I don't think that Kirk is going to be blown away by the market. It's pretty clear that Kirk loves it here, and Quasi and Kevin O'Connell were very steadfast in that they they love and respect Kirk Cousins, but they're not going to break the bank. Like the, it feels like the Viking strategy right now is Kirk, we will give you X number of dollars, X number of years, but if you can get more, we'll see you later. That that sort of deal. So I think Kirk runs it back on a. Sort of smallish contract. Justin Jefferson is going to be the opposite and worth every single penny, by the way, because the market has changed. Where you you look at the top end of the wide receiver market, it's you know Tyreek Hill, thirty million per year, whatever. But with the there's a couple of things at at play here. Number one, the cap going up more than than people estimated, so going up thirty million bucks per year. I mean, you know, the big time TV deals, the streaming deals, it's definitely going to kick up uh, some of the contracts. And I think people are going to be shocked by some of these open market free agent deals. Uh, once the numbers get reported, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. But that's reality right now. And with the cap going up and up and up, I mean, a wide receiver making $37, $38 million per year would be like a wide receiver making 27 a couple of years ago. That's just the way that the market is. Also at work is C.D. Lamb. 
also eligible for an extension, heading into his fifth-year option, a fellow 2020 first-round pick by the Cowboys. Plus, Jamar Chase is now eligible for extension. Now, does Jamar get paid this year when the Bengals still have two more years of control, especially if the franchise tag T-, T. Higgins? I don't know. And also, the Bengals have been notoriously cheap, so I think that one might get dragged out. But, I mean, J.J., is eligible for an extension, and with all those factors, I, I think that he does re-sign for more than you think. So our estimate is four years, $150 million, so $37.5 million average, as well as $100 million guaranteed. Now that gets spread out into uh, the, the first three years of the deal, which is also a sticking point for J.J. It uh, takes care of him uh, through his 26, 27, 28 year uh, age uh, on his contract, uh, as well as 29 in that fourth year of the extension. So the the Vikings get their guy. Uh, he is, and also, I mean, people people are gonna flip a uh, flip a T. You know, once they see the contract numbers, but I mean that that's what the market is gonna bear uh, at this point. And you just watch, like uh, in in subsequent years, the you know, wide receivers uh, at the top end of the market are gonna get 40, 45 million bucks per year. Like they're gonna be getting what is currently quarterback money. So there you go. Uh, so JJ is locked in long term now. Also, you know, the Vikings, you know, can do some cap gymnastics uh, with the Kirk Cousins deal. They can re-add void years. They can really do whatever, even if that 28-5 comes home to roost on, on March 13th. Uh, and with J.J., I mean, Jefferson's uh, uh, cap hit right now is 19.743 on his fifth-year option, so they could reduce that greatly uh, by converting that into a roster bonus as well as uh, prorating a lot of uh, the $100 million guaranteed into a signing bonus over five years. So the Vikings uh, can still actually – they can actually free up more cap space by signing Kirk and by signing uh, Justin Jefferson. And then it comes to Daniil Hunter, where Daniil uh, has uh, uh, around $14 million dead uh, void year cap. It's coming home to roost. But Daniil Hunter, I predict that he leaves. And, you know, the Vikings, it, it is a spot where the cap is a myth. But also, I feel like the Vikings, Jefferson is priority one. It would be nice to have Daniil back, but he is going to be 30 in October. Uh, but he's still uh, a premier edge rusher, so he's going to have a ton of value, a ton of suitors. And I think he's going to get paid out there. And I'm predicting a three-year, $75 million deal, $45 million guaranteed with the Texans. He's going home to the place where he belongs. The pride of Katy, Texas, uh, heads back to uh, Tejas. And him and Will Anderson, I mean, that's a hell of a deal, man. Uh, get your 99 jerseys out. I'm back home. It's going to be a good time, man. So, Daniil leaves. The Vikings get a you know, 2025 third-round compensatory pick, whatever. It's a, sort of whatever. But, uh, you know, the Vikings, with the extension of J- J.J. saving some cap from his $19.743 million, uh, and also the structure of Kirk Cousins' contract, the Vikings actually free up uh, some cap space along with Daniil uh, not having to pay him, even with the, the void year dead cap. Uh, the Vikings still have some free agent money to play with. And they play with it. So the Vikings add cornerback and defensive tackle in free agency uh, to surplus positions. Now, you know maybe they don't go for Legere Sneed, who might be a tag and trade uh, option anyway, or Jalen Johnson, the top end of the market. But Sean Murphy Bunting, we've talked about a lot, uh, would be an economical option. Uh, also, still uh, in the prime of his career. Plus Christian Wilkins, uh, Brian Flores' first draft pick when he was the head coach of Miami. Uh, brings leadership, heart and hustle, uh, size, uh, as well as run stop and prowess to the middle of the Vikings defensive line. You know, Wilkins probably going to get 19, 20 million per year, but that's the cost of doing business in, in the modern NFL, as well as with that cap raise. So the Vikings, you know, w- with Kirk Cousins, I mean, it, it would behoove you uh, if you did resign Kirk, especially since it's a, effectively a one year deal, you got to go all in. Because what's the point of just treading water and what is the point of clearing up cap space and what is the point of just sort of doing whatever if you're not going to go for it? Like if you weren't going to go for it and just want to reload with a completely young team, I mean, let just let let uh, Kirk Cousins walk. But it ain't going to happen in, in this spot. But the Vikings do invest heavily in free agency, uh, really going uh, for that pin. And, and then into the draft, even with Kirk going all in and you could say, yes, Stick and pick at 11. You know, t- Take some defensive linemen. T- take an offensive weapon. Uh, t- trade down. Uh, get some offensive line help. Yes, uh, I- again, I fully understand that. But the Vikings are still going to try and have their cake and eat it too. So even though Kirk is on effectively on a one-year deal in our scenario uh, with a second-year team option, uh, if, if needed, I think the Vikings... I think they go all in, and I think they go and get their guy. Vikings draft to number two with Washington uh, for Drake May. Washington reportedly 
may be weighing their options of potentially passing on quarterback in this draft and acquiring more draft capital as they look to rebuild in D.C. You know, Josh McCown, of course, ties with Drake May all the way back in the day, uh, high school coach uh, of Drake. Uh, and I think the Vikings would make a beautiful landing spot for Drake May, plus the benefit that he gets to sit behind Kirk Cousins and completely just learn for a full year from McCown, from Phillips, from Kevin O'Connell, from Kirk Cousins. Uh, I, I think that it, it would be the best of both worlds at the Vikings going all in with one last ride with Kirk uh, and then rolling with Drake May. Now the cost could be a little bit spendy. So with Washington, uh, we're giving up the number 11, 2025 first round pick, 2026 first round pick and Nick Mullins. Because why not? It, it, may, may we all also interest you in our finest Andrew Boo Juniors and maybe Lewis Scenes? I don't know, man. I don't know. But uh, the Vikings, they, they do get it done. So, again, securing the quarterback of the future. Yeah, you could stick and pick, but uh, go up and get your guy if you're sold that he is going to be the franchise. Uh, J.J., the, the franchise right now, is taken care of. And, yes, that is Mark Arate. Uh, and Kirk Cousins uh, gets gets one more opportunity. And his he doesn't get his multi-year fully guaranteed deal like he was looking for. But I don't think the market is going to bear that out. But the Vikings... The Vikings will be fun uh, in, in 2024. Well, they're always fun, even when they're bad. Uh, but it, it is, uh, again, the best of both worlds because you, you shove all of your chips in with Kirk Cousins this year, but also you have the quarterback uh, of the future in waiting in the best spot where he can sit and marinate for a year. So I, I think they do get it done. But uh, your thoughts are thoughts. Five. Five uh, f- hot fire Vikings uh, offseason predictions. Uh, where were we right? And where were we right? Hmm. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once we'll part the work, put a little something in the bedma. But to next time, Skull Production Value.